and thanks for watching. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Enza Jonas Juni, and I'm honored to have been selected as captain of the speech squad for the upcoming season. First off, I'd like to say welcome and thank you for tuning in to this special edition of the Speech and Debate Awards and Convocation. We look forward to celebrating our team's success and honoring the seniors during this special presentation tonight. As we begin the program this evening, we would like to welcome Dr. Donahue to say a few words. Thank you, Enza. I would like to welcome all of you to our annual speech and debate celebration, the first one held virtually. We're here to celebrate the efforts and accomplishments of our wonderful students. Speech and debate holds a special place in my heart because as many of you know, my daughter participated on our team when she was a student here. And as parents, my husband and I were also involved. I'm very proud of our speech and debate team. Our students worked hard, learned a lot, had some fun, traveled many miles, at least until March, and then competed virtually. And along the way, won a lot of really huge trophies. But beyond the trophies and learning how to craft arguments or give persuasive speeches, they formed great memories together and bonds of friendship that will endure for a lifetime. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the parents and teachers who chaperoned our trips and judged at our tournaments, our coaches who provided you guidance, our alumni who supported you, and especially three people who have been essential in leading and supporting the team, Mr. Tim Huth, Ms. Eleanor Kufos, and Ms. Phoebe Cooper. And a very special thank you to Mr. Willie Lugo for technical support with this virtual celebration. And now, back to Luca. Thank you, Principal Donahue. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Luca Musk, and I'm honored to be one of the upcoming captains of Policy Debate. Team, we've had an amazing year. We increased our NSDA ranking from being 53rd to 18th in the country, qualified 18 students to the TOC, 16 students to Catholic Nationals, and 74 students to the New York State Tournament. For the first time in recent memory, Bronx Science competed in all events offered at the TOC. With our team of 415 speakers and debaters, we would not be able, have been able to get anywhere without the support of a number of you. To our parents, you sacrifice so much for us every day and support us in this intensive activity. You wait for late buses over countless nights in the glow of the 59th Street Sephora. You help us get to the far reaches of the city, the state, and the country. You're always willing to listen to us to talk about our cases and hear our speeches. We say thank you. Friends, please join me in thanking our parents. And to those behind the scenes, a very special thank you. You are truly the unsung heroes of our program. You process all the paperwork, collect all our money, send all our checks to the tournaments in Valo, organize our permission slips and trip forms, and so much more. You are the team behind the team. And Ms. Golden, Ms. Hughes, and Ms. Rosa, please know that we thank you so very much for all you do for our team. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in thanking Ms. Golden, Ms. Hughes, and Ms. Rosa. And a really, really special thank you to every single Bronx Science chaperone who has been with us from Byram Hills to Harvard and everywhere in between. And for everything that you did for the team this year. Without you, we are legally not allowed to go. And with you, we foster amazing memories. Please join us in thanking all the Bronx Science teachers for the chaperone trips this year. To Ms. Cooper and Ms. Kupos, thank you for offering your wisdom and support to all of us. And thank you for always being willing to be an advocate for our best interests and the interests of the team. Your contributions to this team are immeasurable, but we want to make sure that you know that you are appreciated for everything you have done for our team and the school. Thank you for being the backbone of Bronx Science. Students and guests, please join us in offering our thanks to Ms. Cooper and Ms. Kufas. A special word to Mr. Hood. Thank you for investing hours working to make doing what we love possible. Being there for us through thick and thin, believing in us and helping us get through every intolerable airport delay. You have truly gone above and beyond. We are all grateful for the bitsy stories, the dad jokes, the endless support, and above all, the amazing family style dinners we have shared with you across the nation. Thank you very much, and we look forward to continue working with you for years to come. Now, I would like to welcome incoming speech captain Enza Jonas Dooney back to screen. Thank you very much, Luca. I'm honored to be here and I'd like to once again say thank you to the parents, chaperones, administration, and everyone who makes this team run so smoothly. 
During freshman orientation, big sibs make sure to stop at room 203, allowing incoming students to take in the splendor of trophies, plaques, medals, and even a seemingly misplaced surfboard, which speakers and debaters will know hail from the infamous Sunvitational. While the Bronx Science Speech and Debate Team is certainly emblematic of competitive success right at the start of our Bronx Science careers, those of us who've had the privilege of being on this meaningful activity know that it is so much more than that. Mr. Huth likes to say in what has now become kind of a call and response, we are a team, not a club. We like to affectionately add on, we are a family. While speech and debate has fostered our confidence, ability to express ourselves, and our commitment to discourse as a method to engender impactful change, more importantly, it has been the cornerstone of our high school experience and has given us a support system of people who have helped us grow as individuals. I came to Bronx Science as a very shy freshman with only one other person from my middle school. While I was inclined to raise my hand during class, I was much, I lacked confidence when it came to putting myself out there socially. I barely made an effort to talk to my fellow speech novices, people who have now become some of my closest friends. My first two years on speech taught me how to hold a binder properly, thank you OI, how to spot a Regis boy from his khakis a mile away, and how to make random college student centers feel like home for the weekend. It was not so much these newfound skills, however, that fostered my now sometimes overly outgoing persona, but the people I shared these experiences with, people who made me feel comfortable being myself. From late night breakfast at Waffle House, frantically writing essays in airports and singing Hotel Motel Holiday Inn very loudly on the bus, sorry, Mr. Hooth, these indelible memories of uniquely special moments in time have helped us form truly unbreakable bonds. To the freshmen, sophomores, and my fellow juniors, I am so excited to see what next, what next year brings and know that even in a virtual world, we will make the best of it and be there for one another. To the seniors, we all thank you guys so much for being our mentors, confidants, and closest friends. It is strange to give this speech in the midst of such difficult, unprecedented circumstances. I wish we could have had the chance to have this convocation in the cafeteria and have had the chance to say goodbye to each other in person. You have all worked so hard, and this abrupt ending to your senior season was not the one you guys deserved. But in these times, know that it is the caring, empathetic, and resilient community you guys have built that we are so lucky to have supporting us right now when we need it the most. We are going to honor the incredible foundation you guys have created for us and continue to grow this zany, wonderful, and nurturing family for years to come. While I am so excited to see what the future of the team brings, today we're here to celebrate the end of the season and to recognize the outstanding speakers and debaters in each event. Now, please welcome Arjun Mazumdar, upcoming captain of Congress, to the screen. Thank you, Enza. In these challenging times, it's initiatives like this that really give me hope. Despite the abrupt end to the season, we've still banded together in an inspirational show of solidarity to celebrate a truly special year. Our ability to encourage one another and maintain our friendships transcends our physical separation, and this event is yet another testament to the strength of our team culture. More than anything else, this team gives us the ability not just to speak, but to listen. We're constantly forced to advocate from different perspectives, play different roles, and represent or research opinions which we might personally disagree with. In a world bereft of bipartisan spirit, people often don't listen to each other anymore. But through our years, we've been conditioned to listen to one another and form connections between our ideas and establish common ground. Rarely do I leave a round of debate without thinking differently about a topic in some way. There is no better activity for us to engage in. As a generation that will inherit the challenges of our parents, we need to be empathetic and open-minded, confident and humble. Speech and debate hones these skills every single weekend, whether we, are, whether we are dissecting policy proposals at Regis High School or perfecting our characterization before a speech round at Harvard, our events are continuously giving us opportunities to meet new people and grow as citizens of the world. But being leaders, advocators, and listeners isn't always easy. 
being judged by people isn't easy. Waking up early on a Saturday morning, lethargic from a late night of prepping or jet lag is certainly a difficult task. We lug our half asleep minds out of bed and into the halls of unfamiliar schools or universities, running back and forth to rounds, eating sometime in between. So why do we do it? Why do we subject ourselves to such a de demanding activity? I believe it's a shared drive that's unique to the team. We draw inspiration from each other's successes, console our friends when they are down, and pick up where we left off and try again. You can see this optimism and positivity at work on the team bus and sing-alongs from Sacred Heart to States, or the cafeterias of Isidore Newman or Interleague, where we hog computer outlets and fill up tables with our infectious team spirit. We own every single space we enter, either through our competitive successes or our commitment and drive to each other's success. And that's why I keep coming back at least, and that's what makes this team so incredibly special. Of course, like any other successful team, we have an amazing group of leaders working tirelessly, sometimes at the forefront of practices and sometimes behind the scenes late at night finishing rosters, all striving to impart positive change for their, squad, for their squads. Our captains and novice directors are invaluable. Their determination to competitive excellence and their demonstration of team value serves as a constant inspiration to everyone around them. They don't work for recognition, but rather what keeps them going through long nights at Big Bronx or early mornings reviewing prep at tournaments is a knowledge that their impact will be felt in some way. The extra time they put in will help someone else find their confidence or help a confused judge find their room. Their selflessness is a true investment in the team's future. So I would like to thank them for that. None of this would be possible, however, without the support of our team administration. Ms. Kufos and Ms. Cooper, we know that we don't always make everything easy for you, but, we, but please know that we value your dedication to the activity, which we love so much. And Mr. Hood, you are so much more than a team director. You are a leader, a mentor, a support system, which all of us benefit from. From your ability to console and celebrate with us, or your endless knowledge of obscure facts about New Orleans cuisine or Barclay Forum's history, you are truly the lifeblood of this team. Thank you all so much for believing in us. As there are so many people to thank for our team's success this year, we are also excited to recognize special students that have distinguished themselves through their competitive success, dedication, and service to the team. We are now going to begin the awards portion of our convocation for speech, extemporaneous speaking, and Congress. And we would like to recognize our most valuable novices and most valuable varsity members. The MVP awards are given to students that demonstrate outstanding speaking and debating ability and service to each squad. First up, presenting awards for speech, our representatives of upcoming speech leadership, Captain Noel Barilli and this past year's speech novice director, Enza Jonas Jr. Thanks, Arjun. Sharing messages that are personal is a very difficult thing to do, which is why I am so proud that this novice took the opportunity to write and deliver a speech that did just that. This novice threw themselves into speech right at the start, participating in warm-ups and volunteering to speak in front of their novice class just during the, few, the first few weeks of practice. After getting through the awkwardness of putting themselves out there, this novice endeavored to find a piece with a message that they genuinely cared about, writing an introduction in which they talked about how their own experience only strengthened that message. One of the things that I was most proud of this novice is that they were dedicated not only to their own piece, but to helping their peers, whether that was helping them run lines or experimenting with characterization. This novice never failed to take critiques and apply those critiques to make an impactful change in their piece. Although this novice did not get the chance to compete at States this year, I am so proud of them for qualifying. I could not be happier to present this award to Juliet Guerin. I can't wait to see what you will accomplish in these three years. Next, to present the award for MVP for Bar Varsity Speech is upcoming speech captain Noelle Barilli. Thanks, Enza. This person has been a dedicated member of the team since their freshman year. I remember being in the same novice class as them and just absolutely in awe of their enthusiasm and confidence. Over the past three years, I've had the pleasure of watching this person grow and truly find their voice during this season. In all this time, I have never once seen their passion waver. They have taken the resources of speech to advocate for messages that they believe in while spreading joy to those who watch. The positive energy this person brings both in and out of round is infectious. Their performances and success bring inspiration to myself and the rest of the team. A few months ago, they became the first member of speech in the last two years to attend the Tournament of Champions. 
I could not think of a better person to be receiving varsity MVP for speech, Ilana Abrams. Now back to Arjun. Thanks, Noelle. And now I'd like to welcome the upcoming extemporaneous captain, Julia Daniel, as well as upcoming novice director, Marina Shirky, to present the extemporaneous speaking awards. Thanks, Arjun. I'm Marina, and I'm going to be one of the novice directors for extemporaneous speaking this year. The MVP for novice extemporaneous speaker goes to a passionate and dedicated member of the team. This member consistently shows up to practice with enthusiasm and puts her all into every tournament she has been sent to. When she made the transition from public forum debate to extemporaneous speech, she initially felt unsure of her abilities. However, despite this, she stayed committed to the team and put in hard work and effort. From the anxieties of her first tournament to the eventual ease of her last, we've all witnessed her tremendous growth in extemp. We'd like to award the honor of most valuable novice member of extemporaneous speaking to Ella Yellen. Congratulations, Ella. And now to the incoming extemporaneous speaking captain, Juliet Daniel, to the, announce the award for MVP of varsity extemporaneous speaker. Thanks, Marina. Hi, everyone. I'm Juliet, and I'm going to be one of next year's extemporaneous captains. This award goes to a dedicated member of the team. He's the most long lasting member of our squad, and he's seen extemporaneous speaking grow from its roots. He gave up his speech career for a dedication to building Amanda's dream for a distinct extemporaneous squad. Amanda brought the dedication necessary to found, found a separate squad, and he brought that same passion, but with his own twist of humor. He's always been there for the team during the late night calls before tournaments and for the laughs during practice. From running mock tournaments to leading current events debriefs and to creating informative presentations, he has encouraged and prepared the members of our squad to genuinely pursue improvement. And when we all had shaking hands about the painstaking process of sitting in the fun-filled prep room, he was always the one to remind us not to take ourselves too seriously. We'd like to award the honor of the MVP of the extemporaneous squad to Owen Tumair. We are incredibly thankful for his leadership and commitment to our squad and to our team. Congratulations, Owen. Now back to Arjun. Thanks, Juliet. And now I'd like to welcome the upcoming Congress captain, myself, as well as the current novice director, Gareth Hoy, to present the MVP awards for congressional debate. Thanks, Arjun. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you all are safe. My name is Gareth Hui, and I'm a novice director of congressional debate alongside my partner, Amanda Caress. Our two most outstanding novices exhibit qualities, dedication, organization, teamwork, and most of all, a willingness to have a little fun with it all that we believe to be essential in finding success and fulfillment in our activity. Both had incredible success, and Amanda and I are so proud to have seen them de develop as debaters and as people this past year. Our first outstanding novice is the fastest novice to have qualified to states since before Amanda and I were even novices, with his most notable achievement being ninth place at the largest local of the year. Our second outstanding novice is the first novice to have won a local in more than four years, championing Regis Loyola last winter. Either way, they both blew us away with their savvy arguments and their ability to stand out on the Congress floor. It is my pleasure to announce on behalf of me and Amanda that the most outstanding novice award goes to Wolfie Jethwani Kaiser and Dinah Landsman. Congratulations, and now back to upcoming Congress Captain Arjun Mazumdar to announce the MVP for Varsity Congressional Debate. Thanks, Gareth, and congratulations to Wolfie and Dinah. Hi again, everyone. I'm Arjun, and I'm excited to announce the most outstanding Varsity Congressional Debater. The greatest quality in a team leader is not their ability to command a room or compete successfully, but rather their capacity to put the team's interests above their own. And this person exemplifies these qualities perfectly. They have been my role model since sophomore year, and I learned to become a leader by watching them. They inspire us at tournaments by representing our team at the highest levels of national debate. They provide us with an endless source of entertainment on buses and airplanes, belting the lyrics to 2000s R&B hits with the confidence of a professional singer. Their ability to laugh off low ranks and ripped suit pants helps the entire team maintain a sense of perspective and positivity. Their capability to take a joke is unparalleled. But more than anything else, they prove time and time again that leadership is not a position or a title. It is action and example. It is friendship and collaboration. It is selflessness and confidence. That's why I couldn't be more proud to acknowledge my captain and friend, Jonathan Baron, as the MVP of Congress this year. And now I'd like to hand the spotlight back over to my fellow leader, Luca Musk. Thanks, Arjun. That said, if it wasn't clear enough, I'm Luca, and I'm going to be one of the captains for policy debate next year. I am so thankful to celebrate the activity I've been a part of for the last three years, 
which would not be possible without the administration. Mr. Huth, Ms. Cooper, and Ms. Kufos, thank you. You all make this team a reality. I am so excited to work with all of my fellow speech and debate leaders to make the team do even better next season than the already great success we saw this year. Looking back on the past three years, this team has given and taught me so much. I've had so many opportunities to learn and grow with some of the most incredible people. This team has introduced me to a community that I have made some of my closest friends in across the country. And I do not regret any of the late nights, long bus rides, or 6 a.m. flights, because that is where memories have been made. I want to give a special shout out to all the current seniors for making debate a welcoming space for all its members. Thank you to Emily Chan and Ilana Siegel for heading Women in Speech and Debate this year. Thank you to the many speech and debaters in every squad for making this team a safe place for our queer members and members of color. Speech and debate will always be a family, but your work has made it an especially caring and loving one. My experience on this team is nowhere near finished, and I cannot wait to have more delicious team-wide dinners and late night pizza parties in hotel lobbies in my senior year. Speech and debate is such a special activity because it puts you in unexpected situations and forces you to adapt. This team is a family and one that pushes each of us to grow in the into the best version of ourselves. Being co-novice director the past year, I had the privilege to teach and guide some of the most hardworking and intelligent freshmen I have ever met. With the diligence and passion I've seen from the novices amongst every squad, I'm incredibly excited for the future of this team. Now we will present awards for debate. So please help me in welcoming next year's captain of Public Forum, Ayanava Ganguly, and the current novice director for Public Forum, Aaron Mann, to present the PF awards. Thanks, Luca. I'm Aaron, and I'm going to be next year's novice director and captain of Public Forum. This year, I also had the honor of being a novice director for Public Forum. And before I begin talking about our MVPs, I just want to take a second and acknowledge what an amazing group of novices Tenzin Kate and I got to work with. Thank you guys for keeping our meetings entertaining and memorable, and making the tournaments we've had to judge far more enjoyable. You've all made us so proud, and we can't wait to continue working with you in the upcoming varsity season. That being said, a particular group of kids truly impressed us this year, from their insane quantities of prep to their top-notch performance in round and at our karaoke Christmas party. They understand the responsibilities of being members on this team and support those around them to do the same. From bringing the team together through a few ridiculous jokes and always seeking out extra help when they need it, they are well on their way to becoming amazing debaters. It has been a pleasure to teach you guys and watch you grow. From the cafeterias of Regis to the break rounds of Harvard, you have gone above and beyond. We are so, so proud of you and we can't wait to see what you guys do in the next three years. Congratulations to this year's MVPs, the team of Katya Anastas and Stella Emery, and the team of Carson Mitchell and Vivian Yellen. Congratulations, and now to incoming PF captain, Ayanava Ganguly, to announce the award for MVP for Varsity PF. Thank you, Erin, and hello, I'm Ayanava, and I would like to take this time to honor our captains, Benjamin Ostriker and Elias Silver as this year's Varsity Public Forum MVPs, as they wrap up four years of dedication, passion, and service to public forum debate, and more importantly, to our debate family. If I wanted to talk about their competitive accomplishments, I would not be able to finish the speech on time. They've championed Glenbrooks, Princeton, Yale, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on and on. But this does not define their time here as Bronx Science debaters. It is what they each brought to the team that makes them so special and so important to all of us. From mentoring and captaining all varsity and novice public, member, public forum members the past two years with the words of encouragement and advice that have made me personally and so many others gain confidence in ourselves and love this activity. From Ben growing into such a jokester this year and Elias providing the calming experience with his assortment of Russian, Irish, and Indian music. And even from them getting so engrossed at tournaments that they don't even look up at the world around them. Ben and Elias have inspired so many of us to become better debaters and just better people. People who know how to have fun, but also keep sight of what is important as we continue in this activity. I've had the privilege of working alongside them this year as a fellow captain, and for that, I'm extremely grateful. And I'm honored that I can honor them as this year's MVPs, the deserved culmination of their debate careers. Ben and Elias, congratulations and thank you for everything. Now back to Luca. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Ayanava. Here to present awards for Lincoln Douglas, otherwise known as One Person Policy, are the upcoming captains, Dahlia B. Kong and William Friedman. Thank you, Luca. My name's William, and I'm one of the incoming captains for Lincoln Douglas debate next year. 
I have the privilege of announcing the most valuable novice for LD debate. The MVP novice this year is someone who is always engaged in debate, always asking questions, trying to improve, and trying to advance his debate skills. This novice always tried to see how arguments would work in a real debate and showed an understanding of progressive debate that will serve him well going into varsity. Even in our virtual practices, this novice was always present, showcasing his drive to improve and always be better than he was the week before. Even on the bus to Harvard, this novice was still asking questions, making sure his arguments were as good as possible, making sure he had the best prep they, that he could. The MVP novice for this for Lincoln Douglas is Rusem Paul. Congratulations, Rusem. And now to un incoming LD captain, Dahlia Bacon, to announce the award for MVP of Varsity LD Debate. Thanks, William. And hello, everyone. I'm Dahlia. When I initially joined LD, I was kind of unsure if I had made the right decision. To be quite honest, I often felt lost in the activity. It wasn't until my freshman year at UPenn, when I saw this person reciting passages from a novel as a performance in round that I began to realize that I had a place in debate. I know that, without a doubt, many other people on this team have similar stories to share about the experiences with them. Over the next three years, I went in this person slowly become the backbone of our squad. Their experience on the circuit as Bronx Science's most competitive LD debater, as well as their dedication to teaching, organizing, and leading our novice and varsity debaters have made them indispensable to our team's past and hopefully future successes. However, besides being an amazing teammate, this person has also been an extremely supportive friend throughout the years. Whether it be eating together at the last round of the day at Yale, working alongside them while planning practices during leadership, or just simply grooving off in our rooms on the last day of the day camp, they never, they never fail to not only be a source of inspiration for almost everything I do in LD, but also one of the closest and most compassionate people I've ever met. And although the team will never be the same without you, your legacy here will indisputably be remembered for years to come. So, without further ado, I'd like to award Annie Wing as LD's most val valuable varsity member. Congratulations, Annie. Now back to Luca. Thanks, Dahlia. Last, but certainly best, is the division of debate closest to my heart, policy debate. Please welcome one of the incoming captains, myself, and current novice director, Emma Bash. Thanks, Luca, and hello, everyone. I'm Emma. Choosing two novices to honor was incredibly difficult. This year's novice policy, novice policy class was not only a group of immensely talented debaters, but also a group of wonderful, dedicated, and kind people who consistently helped each other more than Luca and I helped them. That being said, the two students to whom we have decided to give this award have managed to distinguish themselves through participation in lessons, hard work, and of course, competitive success. Guy Bloom and Julian Nail are two incredibly talented and hardworking debaters with incredibly strategic minds. Julia's talent was clear from the beginning of this year, not only because she consistently raised her hand to participate and ask questions, but also because she thinks like a policy debater, a skill she used two weeks ago to survive seven rounds of elimination style spar debates. She's a talented researcher, consistently cutting cards of higher quality than anyone would expect from novice. Guy, another talented researcher, taught himself how to cut cards before our planned lesson in order to give himself an edge in practice debates. He's an unfailingly dedicated debater who was always looking for his next practice round. Guy has also won the most speaker awards of anyone on our novice squad. They both have demonstrated a love of debate that made them a joy to teach. Congratulations, and now back to upcoming policy captain, Luca Musk, to announce the MVP for Varsity Policy Debate. Thanks, Emma, and congratulations to Guy and Julia. You both deserved it. Hi again, everyone. I'm Luca, and I'm excited to announce the most outstanding Varsity Policy Debaters. The award for most valued members of policy debate will go to two debaters who have set the stage for policy success in the years to come. One of them has been a mentor for every single member of the squad, whether that be teaching freshmen the basics to coaching my partner and I in our first bid round. This person has transformed the team through their dedication and love for the activity. The other, after recovering from a rough sophomore slump, has gone on to become one of the most intelligent debaters the East Coast Circuit has seen in years. This person has brought policy together and made us work harder than we ever have before. And the team's success this year illustrates their effects. Oh, and did I mention, both of them are incredibly good at debate. These two debaters have accrued more bids than any of the past three years of policy debate combined, with numerous speaker awards and late elimination round appearances. 
they have truly set the bar and brought policy back to the days of Bobbio and Andrew Markov. I am so proud to announce the award for most valued members of policy debate goes to Isaac Rajavinsky and Eugene Toth. Before we transition to Mr. Heath and our final awards of the evening, current LD captain and senior Annie Wang would like to say a few words. Thank you, Luca. Hi, everyone. If you don't know me, my name is Annie, and I was one of the captains of Lincoln Douglas this past season. When sitting down to write the speech, the first characteristics of the team that rose to mind were the countless trophies that sat at the back wall of room 203. But instead of going on and on about our awards and achievements, I want to instead talk about what I think is the most important lesson I learned through speech and debate. My first memory of the team was being ambushed at the entrance of the gym during freshman orientation. At the time, I didn't understand why there were seven students crowding the doors of the gym wearing speech and debate shirts. They were frantically trying to catch every freshman that attempts to escape being handed a flyer. But now I understand, as cliche as it sounds, each incoming freshman was a possible novice to the team, a new addition to the family. When we were novices, tournaments were the most exciting event to occur on our weekends. We tried our hardest on homework to get a spot at tournaments. We did practice rounds during our lunch times, half eating, half flowing. We did spreading drills, G2 pen and mouth, praying that no math teacher walked into our meeting. We look forward to putting our luggage in the auditorium and Ubering to the airport with friends. As novices, we were the most carefully hardworking and seemingly nerdy group of kids. But as we grow as a team, we're also growing older individually. We start to care more about wins and losses. And more, we start to demand some form of feedback or reward from the activity for our hard work. That changed what tournament were about for some of us. Instead of hanging out with teammates, we stayed in alone at hotel rooms in hopes that an extra two hours of prep will give us that elimination break that we've worked so hard for. I used to care a lot about wins and losses and records. I remember how my first question when running into a teammate at tournaments used to be, what's your record? And not, how are you? Looking back now, I realize that 10 years from now, the memories that will last are not my record at Isdor Newman, but the amazing fried chicken brunch I had in New Orleans. It's not about the goal, but also the process. And if you trust the process, the goal will come. So continue to work hard, work towards your goals and aspirations, but don't lose your passion in the process. Cherish the time you have with your speech and debate partners because in a blank, you yourself will be a senior. Savor your opportunities to try the various cuisines of different states and regions because opportunities to travel with friends don't come easy in the future. And instead of staying by yourself in hotel rooms, ask your teammate to order in with you and prep together. This past season was one of the positive progress and with a sprinkle of unexpected change. We rose the national ranking to be ranked 19th. We attended new tournaments at new locations and explored new cuisine that added to our traditions of team dinner. We qualified all six events to the Tournament of Champions, held online for the first time. Celebrate the news, but don't forget the old. The method of ambush near the doors of gym to hand out flyers, the good old 59th and Lexington Battle Stop after every trip, the delayed flights, the doing homework in flights, the taking tests in flights. Don't forget Mr. Who's stories of Bitsy, his food recommendations, and keep the memories of him watching around close to your heart. Don't forget the times Miss Tracy fends up hotel strangers, her comforting hugs, and her willingness to always give up her weekends for us. Recognize and appreciate all that Ms. Cooper and Eleanor do for us. They do so much we don't see, and without them, this team would not be what it is today. And lastly, don't forget to take lots of photos at tournaments. Thank you, everyone. And now back to Luca. Thank you, Annie. And now I'd like to introduce Mr. Huth for our final awards of the evening. Thank you, Luca. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for making time to view Convocation tonight. I want to start my remarks by thanking the many wonderful people that have supported our team this past year. First, to the parents viewing, your care, time, and support are appreciated as we could not run our team activities, Big Bronx, and trips without your time and effort. Students, please join me in thanking your wonderful parents. Another special thank you must go out to Dr. Donahue, Ms. Cooper, and Ms. Eleanor Kufis, who have supported me and all the logistics required to run the 
best speech and debate team in the country. In your exceedingly busy schedules, you have always made time for me and all the members of the team. And I am eternally uh, grateful for all the help and support you have provided us. Thank you very much for everything you have done for our team. To both school staff and parent chaperones, your time is so appreciated because without you, we could legally not run our trips. I want to take a moment to thank two parent chaperones in particular, Ms. Mira Toth and Mr. Bernard Hoy. Collectively, these past four years, Ms. Mira Toth and Mr. Hoy have chaperoned over 30 trips. You have dedicated yourself to learning how to judge, but more importantly, provided time to get to know our team members. We hope that you enjoyed coming with us around the country because we have enjoyed every moment with you. We honor you and we thank all of the school and parent chaperones this year. I would like to say a special thank you to Ms. Tracy Brown, who has traveled the country with me and the team these past four years. Your kindness and dedication to the students is amazing. And we want you to know that your presence on our team strengthens and guides us, and we are honored to have you as part of the team. I know I speak for all the students and parent chaperones that are lucky enough to know you when we say thank you for your kindness, spirit, and passion for the students. Tracy, we have a student that would like to say some words about you. So please welcome senior and current captain of Congressional Debate, Jonathan Baron. Thank you, Mr. Huth, and thank you everyone for attending this afternoon. So when you open your invitation to a debate tournament, the first thing you do is scroll. You scroll down to the adult section and you pray, pray, pray that the words Miss Brown, a school aide at Bronx Science, will also chaperone. You know, but to me, that's a little unfair. Miss Brown, or as she's known to the masses of students at Bronx Science, Miss Tracy is so much more than just a school aide. She's the person you wait for on the extra long line to get into school in the morning. Just so when you swipe in, you can say, good morning, Miss Tracy. She's the person who you stop by the dean's office just to catch up with, or the person who you can genuinely go to for emotional support, or even just a hug. I know I have. So I met uh, Tracy Brown four years ago next to a parakeet cage at Kellenberg Memorial High School. The debate brings you to very weird places, but with the best people. I've eaten barbecue with her in Atlanta, Waffle House in Kentucky, IHOP in Florida, and a muffin under the open ceiling of the Bronx Science Cafeteria. She's a person who truly cares about the students, and then we truly care about her. I wish we were in person so I could give her a big hug, because if there were more people like Miss Tracy in the world, maybe it wouldn't be as messed up as it is today. So for now, to one of the most incredible, powerful, and caring people I've ever known, Miss Tracy Brown, I say thank you. Thank you for being there, for supporting us, and for being the best gosh darn chaperone a debater or a speechy could ever ask for. Love you lots. Now back to Mr. Huth. Thank you, Jonathan. And thank you so much, Ms. Tracy. To the students, you welcomed me to your speech and debate world four years ago. And from day one, helped to make me feel like part of the Bronx Science speech and debate family. We have traveled the country together from Chicago to Fort Lauderdale, to Atlanta, to Boston, to Lexington, both of them, to Milwaukee, and all around the five boroughs. Your spirit and passion for forensics has made these past four years the most memorable years of my life. Students, you are truly what makes this activity fun. I look forward to many, many years leading this team and to see all of you grow in your speaking and debating ability, but more importantly, growing into articulate young adults that bring a spirit of service and civic mindedness to the world. All of you have so much to offer, and I challenge you to dream big, but work even harder to make a positive change in the world. Thank you to every student viewing tonight. I would also like to extend a special thank you to our student leadership, our novice directors, captains, and team manager. Every one of you has given countless hours and service to this team. You mentored novices, critiqued practice rounds, prepared meaningful practices each week, and so, so much more. You may not know this, but all the student leaders have to drop their lunch to take the, the uh, debate leadership class during ninth period. All of our leadership students give up countless weekends to judge our novices 
and every one of you went above and beyond to make our team special. To all the student leadership, I know I speak for the entire team when we say thank you so much for your hard work, time, and dedication to the team. Students, the list of your amazing accomplishments are vast, but to highlight some, we begin with the fact that we are the largest speech and debate team in the country with currently 222 varsity and 172 novice members of the team. This year, we obtained over 250 NSDA degrees. We qualified 74 members to the New York State Forensic League State Tournament. We qualified 18 students to the, national uh, to the Tournament of Champions and 16 students to Catholic Nationals. And for the first time in recent memory, Bronx Science qualified members to all the main events at the TOC one of just a handful of schools to be able to claim this feat in the country. As individual squads, your accomplishments this year are impressive. To highlight a few accomplishments for each squad, on public forum, we championed Princeton, broke two teams at the TOC, finaled Harvard in the novice division, while championing multiple novice and JV tournaments on the local level. In speech and extemporaneous speaking, we qualified a member to the TOC for the first time in two years, qualified four to Catholic Nationals, and broke at every tournament attended during the regular season. In Lincoln Douglas, we qualified and competed in the TOC for the first time since 2015. We broke at eight national circuit tournaments, reached the semifinals at Scarsdale, and championed the Kaiser debates. In policy debate, for the first time since 2016, we qualified a team to the TOC. We also reached the finals at Isidore Newman and the quarterfinals at both Harvard and Lexington, in addition to having one of the most competitively successful varsity and novice policy seasons at Bronx Science in recent memory. In congressional debate, we championed the tournaments at Princeton and Isidore Newman, while reaching the finals at Yale, the Berkeley Forum, and breaking at least two competitors at every national circuit tournament we attended. I could go on and on, but I will stop by saying this. Every squad on this team is incredible, and it's your dedication to speech and debate that honors our past, but makes us excited to see what the future holds. Before we move on to the final awards of the evening, I want to reaffirm what I am most proud of, your team spirit and friendship. What makes Bronx Science Speech and debate, debate unique is that we are a team, not a club. And along with that ideal is the expectation that we support each other at all times. If we drop at a tournament, we watch our fellow teammates compete. There is no exclusion nor exclusiveness. We are a team and we support each other. Over the past four years, I have witnessed this in action. And I encourage every team member watching tonight to continue to build an ethos of camaraderie that other schools could only dream of. I charge all of you, from novices to senior varsity students preparing to leave us in a few weeks at graduation, with the responsibility to continue to think of ways to strengthen our competitive records and team spirit, and always be willing to share ways to grow and improve. Always remember that we, are the standard bearers of a legendary speech and debate program with a rich 50 year history. Remember too, that speech and debate is an activity for mature, responsible students, but ultimately it is your activity and it will be what you make of it. So students, you are the reason why this team is great and I am beyond proud to be your director. Congratulations on an amazing year and I look forward to seeing what the future holds for our team. I now want to start our special recognitions first by honoring our senior team members. Our seniors have dedicated four years of hard work, time, and effort to the team. Our seniors this year have been leaders that saw 18 team members qualified to the TOC, 74 students qualified to the 2020 state tournament, reached deep out rounds at Harvard, UPenn, Scarsdale, Isidore Newman, and the Barclay Forum, while in their careers championed multiple national circuit tournaments like Florida Blue Key, Yale, Princeton, and the Glenbrooks, while perhaps most impressively helped our team break at every tournament attended this year that offered elimination rounds. 
We are now gonna call the names of our senior team members. When school reopens, we will process your NSDA certificate and mail it to your home. Being virtual does not lessen the importance of your membership on this team. And we thank and honor every senior member watching tonight. With that, I will call the senior roll. Jonathan Baron. Emma Bash. Lola Berger. Amanda Caress. Ryan Caress. Emily Chan. Felicia Chen. Zoe Cooper. Morgan Covino. Brandon Cohen. Eleanor Geegan. Lennox Gregoire. Audrey Hill. Gareth Hoy. Sheikh Jobayar. Chirag Kumar. Harper Learmonth. Sarah Levin. Jennifer Loeb. Chloe Luck. Alini Marrero. Alexandra Musad. Niso Namias. Ethan Nanavati. Benjamin Ostriker. Anuj Fofalia. Isaac Razavinsky. Ilana Siegel. Ellie Selden. Elias Silver. Alexander Tam. Eugene Toth. Owen Tumer. Annie Wang. Howard Wang. And Alexandra Weiss. Seniors, your forensics accomplishments are amazing. But more importantly, all of you have been exemplary leaders to the younger members of our team. You have given so much to this team over the past four years, whether at Big Bronx, or helping each other prep and compete at both local and national tournaments. You represent the best of the Bronx Science Speech and Debate team. And though your time with us is now short, you join a distinguished group of alumni that dates back to 1969, and you are forever members of the Bronx Science Speech and Debate team. Since we are a family, I want you to know that you will always have a home here and you are welcome back at any time. We will miss you. We will miss you big time. But we thank you for everything you have given to this team. Again, thank you senior, seniors, an outstanding job. With that, we now move to the final two awards of the evening. Our penultimate award is for outstanding service to the speech and debate team. The award for outstanding service to the speech and debate team goes to a special team member that has gone above and beyond practice and competition participation. This student has demonstrated a dedication to its team through taking charge of our team logistics, helping leadership organize field trip paperwork, completed some of the most challenging responsibilities at Big Bronx, and was always willing to judge events for our novices. Every week, Alexandra Weiss, wrote positive messages to be shared on the school announcements to broadcast our accomplishments to the school. Alex also helped organize all the NSDA points this year, in addition to helping with the logistics of managing the largest speech and debate team in the country. Additionally, Alex was an active member of the Bronx Science Policy Debate Squad and always brought a positive presence to team practices, competitions, and to Big Bronx. Alex, you're an amazing, kind and dedicated member of our team. And we would like to recognize you for outstanding service to the team. Team members, please join me in recognizing Alex Weiss, recipient of the award for outstanding service to the speech and debate team. Congratulations, Alex.
And that brings us to our final award of the evening. Our final award tonight is called the Andrew Markoff Spirit of Forensics Award. This award was named after Andrew Markoff, a 2010 Bronx science graduate and policy debater. In his time on the team, Andrew achieved a Bronx science record of 407 debate wins. And on March 6th of 2010, Andrew surpassed a 33-year record of 390 debate wins previously held by Steve Gold, a class of 1977 policy debater. This award recognizes not only speech and debate competitive success, but a person who demonstrates the spirit of forensics. This year, we have decided to award the Andrew Markov Spirit of Forensics Award to a student that has at all times demonstrated the culture and values of the Bronx Science Speech and Debate team. From my first day with the team four years ago, this student was 100% supportive of rebuilding our brand the right way by making sure to focus on dedication, team spirit, and competitive excellence. This student led by example, whether staying until close to midnight each night at Big Bronx, helping others prepare for rounds in addition to their own prep at tournaments, and always having a positive attitude about debate and the forensics community. This student, Annie Wang, was the definition of team member, leader, and friend. Annie never backed down from a challenge and always wanted to compete every chance she got. In fact, I have probably traveled to more places with Annie than with just about anyone outside of my family from New Orleans, Boston, Atlanta, to Fort Lauderdale, to name just a few. I distinctly remember a moment when I realized that Annie had a special passion for forensics. It was during the preliminary rounds of the Catholic Nationals her sophomore year in a massive convention center in Washington, DC. Annie had just successfully debated whether bystanders have a moral obligation to act in the face of injustice. And I remember her running over to me after round two to tell me not about whether she thought she picked up or dropped the round, but about an interesting argument she had just encountered. I knew at this moment that Annie was debating for the right reasons, to challenge her assumptions and to grow intellectually. Annie, I want you to know that we appreciate everything you have done for our team, enthusiastically learning as a novice, attending weeks upon weeks of debate camp to improve your technique so you can better serve as novice director, and leading LD practices along with Harper as captain. I can say with certainty that you are leaving the team better than you found it. I'll close by saying that during your time on this team, you have been many things, novice director, novice MVP, uh, novice, captain, varsity MVP, and friend to us all. There is one more thing you will now be, Annie. We will now call you a role model to all future members of the speech and debate team. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing the 2020 winner of the Andrew Markoff Spirit of Forensics Award, Annie Wang. Congratulations. And with that, now back over to Luca. Thank you, Mr. Heath. And I'd like to add an additional thank you to all the seniors. You all have done a phenomenal job of making this team the most successful and fun community I've ever seen. It's hard to say goodbye and we will certainly miss you all. We will try our hardest to keep the trend you all have set. Thank you all for everything. With that, our award ceremony is finished. Thank you all so much for logging on and we wish you all a wonderful summer. See you next year.